and welcome to Script Tonight Reacts. I'm Script Tonight. Today we're going to be watching Season 1, Episode 4 of The Expanse, coming off a heck of an Episode 3. You guys keep telling me, oh, bear with it, it's a slow start. Not in my world. <laughs> I think, yeah, I'm completely happy with the pacing and I'm excited to know that this is apparently amateur hour as far as the show's concerned. And things are going to get somehow more intense than they already are. I'm already happy. I, I really am not kind of bearing with these episodes and waiting for things to happen. I'm really enjoying learning, actually. I, it's one of my favourite things when you get the privilege of entering a new world with a TV show with the kind of canon that The Expanse has and other shows that I won't mention so as not to um, annoy anyone with the comparisons. <laughs> but I love it. I love setting the table. I love learning about the characters. What are their motivations? What even are... What's the class system? What What are the geographical locations? What's the issue with gravity? Yep, I got it now. Series. I'm absolutely certain there will be stuff that I don't find significant at this point that I would find significant on a rewatch because I'd have all of the additional information but right now I'm actually loving that there's not a dull moment in the show for me because every single moment I'm analysing, reading, studying the screens on the wall, someone phones, goes, looks at the screen, trying to listen out for the names and all of that kind of stuff I'm just starting to see the characters begin to get fleshed out so you can start forming opinions on them and it's still such early days can you tell i'm happy i am i'm a happy reactor right now i think i'm really in for this journey so what's on my mind right now i want to know what's going on with julie mang i feel like it is going to be linked to who stole the stealth technology and who um you know destroyed the scopuli who destroyed the canterbury because we just don't know and now there's this ship on the way so who is it the logical conclusion just based on what we know so far is that it would be the opa but you know who are the opa who's funding it who's leading it what what are their actual goals and then of course there's the there's the background question of well what if it's not the opa are there other agitators that we don't yet know about who are responsible for this who had like gamed it out and knew that given the tensions that already existed people would be so busy trying to blame each other that maybe they wouldn't even think about an outside influence so I'm trying to keep my mind as open as possible. I also want to learn more about Miller's backstory and particularly his relationship with Octavia Muss. I still feel like there's like something between them and I, whether it's something we're going to see develop um, or something that we're going to learn a bit of backstory about, I'm in. I really love them riffing off each other. There's also the mystery of, is Naomi Nagata part of the OPA? If she is, great, because it's an access into, into the OPA. If she's not, you know, but it's still interesting. So that's why I say I would favour her being in the OPA, because that would then give us that route in. And I'm really anxious to learn more about that. We also had the introduction of Anderson Dawes, who, as I said in the last episode, goody, baddie who cares what a fantastic character i was just gripped that whole scene i i hated the fact that i had to cut it down for youtube because literally i i didn't stop reacting the entire time that, that he was talking and there was it it didn't feel like he had a deadline there was no deadline and that was great also very interesting the stuff that's happening on earth with vasarala and her kind of burning de graf in order to get to the bottom of of what was going on and and she's a step closer because she's she's kind of ruled the at least the official kind of mars leadership out I and mean, it's always possible that you've maybe got agitating forces on mars earth 
or somewhere else we don't even know about yet that are involved in this but at least she knows it's it's not an official sanctioned kind of mars mission and things are really getting tough on series because thanks to the canterbury blown out of the sky i don't by the way think this is accidental i think the canterbury was the target all along so that the water wouldn't get to series because that is the spark you've got all of these people living on this thing and now you've got a water shortage which is critical you know you have a food shortage it's bad but you know you have an air or a water shortage and you are really fucked because you've got you're talking about a number of hours you know 72 hours maybe that you could last without water before things but well before people start dying and i think when you get people in a situation like that where they are trapped people really go crazy and we saw that building throughout the last episode there was the graffiti there's the guys in the medina that are whipping people up we have people refusing to give water to to martians because we won't go into that but because they felt that mars was responsible for what happened to the canterbury and therefore the water shortage itself i'm feeling like that was some sort of punishment on belters for opa activity and resistance activity in general and it all culminated with um a mini riot and then the apparent death of dimitri and i will say apparent death until someone officially tells me he is dead not because i have any massive belief that he's going to be alive but blind stubborn hope because i really really like dimitri come on give me a magic ending for dimitri and have him have him come back that would be amazing and i'm really actually enjoying the pace at which they're developing the world i know it won't be quick enough for you guys cause especially if you've read all the books i appreciate it'll be frustrating because you're wanting to you know you almost want to inject your knowledge into my brain so that i don't miss anything but trust me i'm paying attention um i don't take it lightly when tv producers and authors take the time and dedication to provide this amount of detail in a show i think it's almost sacrilege not to pay attention so i'm watching all of it's going in i don't actually take notes because for me that pulls me out of the action so i don't take notes but i do have a really good memory i do re-watch episodes because as those of you who follow me know my wife tends to watch along with the show that i'm on so i will see the episode once when i react you're seeing my very first reaction during the edit i'll insert little comments about things that i've seen during the edit and then after that i watch it through again end to end with my wife so i'm on it and before we go in i just really did want to say one final thing before we start the show and that is just welcome welcome and thank you to all of the new subscribers who are in the expanse fandom community so we have two moderators on the channel belinda and daniel and they're both massive fans of the expanse and believe me they campaigned for, for me to to watch this show i'm watching it even though it actually lost in a viewer poll because the reasons that people gave for me to watch the expanse beat the reasons that people wanted me to watch the other show and one of the things that sold it to me was that they said about how generous and just up for it the fan community is and i'm already seeing that in the comment section you guys have made me feel so welcome in your community a really really warm introduction and the fact that you just appreciate that i'm taking the show seriously and i'm really interested in in learning and so i just wanted to say thank you for being so kind and warm and generous um, with your comments and I hope that I can continue to do that enthusiasm justice as we move forward. So, all of that done, let's get on with this episode. Let's have at it. Space Tinder Man. So, were they using that kind of app to kind of ferment what they were doing? You know, the average life expectancy on Earth is 123 years. Even better on Mars. You know what it is on Ceres? 68. <sighs> But the reason I'm pleasant is that average is only going down. Still higher than Glasgow. Stiff's ID is Busy Patico. You know, there's no religious Petico. directive on file, so okay if I recycle them? Factory on 39 needs some fertilizer. Not yet. What? Doniger, 
Right, that's the Martian ship. It's called Doniger. We had nothing to do with the Canterbury. But because of you, Earth thinks we destroyed it. Not anymore. Some people are calling it an act of war. You need to recant. Glenn Nagata, true or not, it will change the narrative until cooler heads prevail and figure out what really happened. Pause. Why can't he recant without throwing Naomi under the bus? I mean, I know the answer to that question is that people want certainty. They would pick a wrong certainty over a right mystery. <laughs> that happens all the time and it infuriates me. It's okay not to know and to have to figure something out. It's better to do that than to be 100% certain of bullshit. <sighs> that actor, Greg Burke, is absolutely amazing, though. Whatever he's in, he's chilling as all hell. But I don't buy that it would cool heads in the short term. It won't. It will just make people feel right and angry. And they're going to agitate for some action against... Not in Mars, but Martian civilians, like wherever they are. I think that's a fucking awful idea. Play. I won't do it. Good. There's some kind of game being played here. Maybe someone wants a war. I don't know. But if you really do want to stop it, then let us go and then we talk. Captain, inbound vessel approaching defense perimeter. One minute's contact. Hail them. Frequency's open. Unidentified vessel. This is Captain Teresa Yao of the MCRN Doniger. Doniger. Oh, yes! If you maintain your present course, you will be fired upon. Shit! It's a trap! What am I even looking at? Whoa! Multiple fast movers detected. More than one ship. I count six bandits. What the fuck? <gasps> oh! They're firing! Prepare to return fire. Let's do this! Oh, my sweet summer child. Oh my god, how much would you be shitting yourself? Whatever they've come to do, it's just become a suicide mission. They're confident. They started this fight, and we're going to finish it. Holy shit. There's massive radar and radar jamming. We can't resolve the drive signatures or make any visual ID. Somebody has a new fleet of warships. I concur. Mm. Any idea who it might be? Not yet. Keep me apprised. Because that's going to take money as well, right? I was wiser than they thought. Dear, dear, says I. Punishment is death. I'm nervous. I'm really nervous. If the Doniger gets taken out, oh god, it's gonna be all fucking hell breaking loose. There's nothing to be scared of, you know. There's little rocks that burn up in the sky. Oh, that's so cool. I worry about people oh. who throw rocks. Nobody could throw rocks that big. It just happens sometimes because, you know, gravity. Do you miss Earth? If I did, I'd go back. My great uncle emigrated from Earth. He missed it terribly. He used to tell me stories when I was a little boy about these endless blue sky, free air everywhere, open water all the way to the horizon. Free air? And someday we would make Mars just like that. When you spend your whole life living under a dome. And the idea of an ocean seems impossible to imagine. I could never understand your people. 
why, when the universe has bestowed so much upon you, you seem to care so little for it. Reckon things further to your best. True story. Martians, too. But look your ship. We are nothing like you. The only thing Earthers care about is government handouts. Free food, oh. free water, free drugs, so that you can forget the aimless lives you lead. You're short-sighted. Selfish. I do. Pause. Can I, I just got to say for a minute. People in receipt of benefits or not the problem that led to the climate crisis. <laughs> that would be capitalists. And by that, I don't mean the little people trying to make a living. I mean hyper capitalists who just want to burn through resources as quickly as possible in order to make maximum profit in the short term without any kind of appreciation of the long-term impact on people or on planet. That's me on my soapbox, and then I'm gonna step off my soapbox. Play. Earth is over, Mr. Holden. My only hope is that we can bring Mars to life before you destroy that too. We got intel on both. Secure the prisoner. Yes, sir. Okay. Get in the chair. Check. That man has just made me patriotic as an earthling. God damn it. What the fuck is happening? Splash one. Five more to go. Okay. Let's do this. Is there a problem? No, sir. It's just... Their Torp's guidance systems are really good, better than anything we ever simmed against. They're pushing our PDCs to the limit. Fuck. Oh shit! Come on, let's fuck these people up! Wait. Where did they go? Hey assholes. Busy Batico's dead. <laughs> Latter-day Saints took a considerable risk hiring you to build the Nauvoo. Is that Tyrese? Oh, yes! <laughs> there have been rumblings huh? that you should be replaced as head of operations for the project. Oh, dear. Your ties to the OPA have been making a number of elders and the general authorities uncomfortable, particularly in light of the recent events in the belt. The OPA is only interested in human rights and jobs for all belters. And fomenting riots on Ceres, and inflaming passions in the wake of the Canterbury. But I'd be remiss if I didn't remind you that without me, you're going to have a very difficult time retaining the most skilled belters for your project. You're about to send your best and brightest Mormons on a hundred year voyage to a new world around a new sun. Who knows what tragic malfunctions might occur along the way. <clears throat> What's the deal with the Mormons? Hang on. Pauls, what is the deal with the Mormons? We had the guy in the last episode who was doing like a stand up comedy night. And now they're sending their best and brightest Mormons to the what? A new planet to colonize. Is this more, are they Mormon missionaries? Is that, oh my God, is more of the Mormons taken over? Is, is being a Mormon the new major religion on earth? I'm intrigued. Don't tell me in the comments if I'm supposed to learn that over time. No spoilers. But I'm thinking my questions out loud. Okay, play. 
for now, uh, please just continue along. Mm, need back time. Nicely handled. So the Nauvoo is the ship that they're going to send the Mormons off on. <laughs> that just sounds so wrong saying that. Get all the Mormons off the ship and get those sensors pointed toward the Doniger. I need a full report. Now. What is... Oh, there goes another. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh fuck. Who'd be insane enough to take on the Doniger and CQB? Me These bastards. Chair. I don't need to be here. Put me back with my people. Keep them quiet or gag him. I want IDs. We need to know their capabilities. I'm sorry, sir, but there's nothing matching their profile in MCRN or UN records. Isolate each vessel. I want detailed imagery and drive signatures on every one of them. This is insane! Who are they? I've seen a ship like that before. Where? Oh my god. I'm starting to shit myself for the Dondra now. Guys. I was just a transport pilot, you yahoo! You understand? I wasn't trained for this shit! Just a glorified bus driver, okay? You satisfied? Man, this is not supposed to be happening! Hey, no, 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 no! Hey, 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 hey! Look what I got. This is gonna calm me right down. Trust me, we're all gonna be just fine. <gasps> what? Happened. What? Get the gun, Jim. Get the fucking gun. Wow, walk right past it. Well done. Reaching pods on deck. We're being boarded. No! To tell you, Not now, the ships you're fighting are just like the ones that blew up the Canterbury. Who is it? Whoever is responsible for this is trying to blame Mars for everything. Come on. Come on, Mars. Lopez, I want you to get Mr. Holden off of this ship and safely back to MCRN command. Just go, Jim. Just go. Just... Oh my god, they're all gonna go. I figure we have maybe 20 minutes of air left. Crap. Can we kill Alex? I want everyone else to live. It'll give us a few more minutes. Dracaris. Sedative. There's enough here to take one of us out, which will slow down their breathing and cut down our oxygen use. Damn it. I want to wake up. All right, I want him to wake up now. That was said in anger. I didn't even get to say goodbye. Do. It does matter. I really, really, really want them to live. We've not even heard a sniff about Dimitri. Here we go. 
Here we fucking go. Fall back and cover. Oh. There's fucking loads of them. Go get your friends. Jim, go get them. Go. Good. Every time I sample a guy, I get a different ID comes up with a face. It looks like it could be a match. Huh. Oh my god. I bet he has an ID spoof for mod. They're designed to spin cops, waste our time chasing down false leads. The only guys who really use them are crooks. That's pretty smart. Ha. He's got a memory crypt in his cap. Ooh. Get that out now. Oh. Oh god. There. Customs documents, corporate R&D. This guy was a data broker. Huh. Okay. Whatever he brokered. Must have been important enough to get him killed. Have luck. If he's not been hey. fined, how the fuck are we going to save his uh, life? Son of a bitch, what do you want to be? Oh, God. <gasps> oh, shit. Oh, shit. I'll get help. Somebody help. <gasps> Oh, thank God. Ah, who, is this the baddies? Well, the invaders. Fuck off. Let go. Don't make me shoot you. You won't. What? It doesn't look like any OPA ground I've ever seen. Tech is way too advanced. Yours. Who is funding this? We're talking about some serious resources Who are you here. Working for? Why did you destroy the Canterbury? Phoebe Station, were you there? You were. What mm. happened? Pulse. Right. Bezzy Batuki or whatever his name that wasn't what his name was. I'm just called to call him Space Tinder Man. You know who I mean. Space Tenderman is a data broker. This guy, not Cushing, keeps talk, trying to get people to talk about Phoebe, which we know is like a research station of Mars's. So, is what Mars knows that the rest of us don't is that maybe someone broke into Phoebe, it's been compromised. And some data, a weapon, something has been stolen by, I'm guessing, those people. Which is going to give them an, a, like a competitive advantage. So maybe Mars was developing a weapon to assist with its kind of ascendancy over Earth. But now, this faction of whoever the fuck has nicked it. Or at least got maybe the data that explains how to build it or whatever. And they're clearly well resourced and capable of deploying it. Because they've already got these advanced torpedo um, target things and everything else. We know they've got stealth technology. Oh, who is bankrolling these people though? That's where my brain's at. I just had to get it out, otherwise I'd, I'd be thinking about that while I was watching the drama. Okay, play. So he's dead. We're not going to get any more from Let's him. go, please. You have to help me get my friends. You barely know those other people. They're only here because of me. Please. I'll make you a deal. Oh, shit. <laughs> the deal is this. You will all testify that Mars had nothing to do with the Canterbury's destruction. Just do it. Donna Drew was dispatched to Phoebe Station after she went silent for several weeks. Why? We still don't know. Worse! Everyone on board was dead. Their bodies were incinerated. We found them refrozen to the walls of the ice tunnels. We thought it was a fire or a chemical spill, but then we discovered that all the computer cores were destroyed. Oh my! I mean, someone did it deliberately. They were covering something up. Like what? I don't know. The captain has set condition zero. She's gonna scuttle the ship. Oh, shit! Captain, not yet. This 
has to count for something. Can they make, can they take all of those people out by scuttling the ship? Go! Oh my god! They've got to try and get past. Oh my god. Oh shit. Oh god. Burton! Burton is not going to die saving Alex. Oh. Oh fuck! No! No, I want Lopez to live now. Oh fuck! Bitching about Alex and man up. I need some juice. Juice. Does that mean everyone on the Don Donager is it's going down with the ship? They're still firing. Yeah. How you like them apple bitches? Come on! Shh. Tear them up. Sorry. Are those ships still out there? You got it, Hoss. I mean, yes, sir. It would have been nice to see an ocean on Mars. Captain, this door won't hold much longer. I didn't think we could lose. I've just been trying to recover myself. I can't not believe what I just witnessed. <sighs> well, now I understand what you mean by <laughs> things get a bit more crazy, and I assume that's the tip of the iceberg. <sighs> God. It is so amazing how this show has you just doing emotional somersaults and like U-turns on people, on situations. Like I went into this episode really quite pissed off at Mars and specifically Lopez. I actually wasn't terribly mad at the commander woman whose name I'll subtitle because I felt like she was actually kind of being sensible. I, f I found Lopez kind of creepy. But man, the dignity of the Mars people. How can you not be impressed by that? They didn't think they could lose. They got the shock of their fucking lives. And they held together through the whole thing. They were an absolute team i was really impressed <sighs> but fuck me the death toll in this episode we started off by losing shed <sighs> then i thought we were going to lose everybody because they were running out of air and then we lost the donager and all the martians except lopez that were on the donager the entire crew minus lopez i think i didn't see any other martian 
in that little getaway vehicle. So what we've learned this episode is that Martians aren't in complete assholes. They are unreasonable, arrogant, judgmental, and awesome. Alex has, has won back some esteem for me this episode also in taking one for the team and in piloting the escape ship and turning back into Alex again because I liked Alex when he was regular Alex. So he's off the shit list for now. Right, he's just about made it off the shit list. Burton is... What a hero. I, I fucking love Burton. We also learned, and we did a pause about it, so I won't talk for too long, but in the pause I was saying, I think Phoebe has been compromised. It was compromised a lot worse than I had in my mind. It's gone, effectively. So everyone serving was killed in a really awful way. And then the cores were destroyed, which tells me they were working on something. Someone found out about it. Maybe they wanted to seize that information but they didn't want anyone else to know what information they'd seized. So they destroyed everything that, that was there and every person that could have told us that stuff. And these guys, whoever they are, are resourced. They've got multiple ships. They've got a fuck ton of people. They coordinated that assault almost perfectly. They've taken out now Phoebe, the Scopuli, um, the Canterbury, and the Donager in no time at all. My only hope, well, and now obviously they're on, they've all just gone down with the Donager, so I don't think there's going to be much evidence that we're going to be able to get from that other than the testimony of, of the escapees, which are like our people and Lopez, and I. I really, really want Lopez to make it for two reasons. One, my opinion of him has changed with the way that he behaved this episode. I thought he was absolutely courageous. And the second reason is we need his testimony now because if just us lot show up in an escape pod, I'm just worried that we're not going to last five minutes if we encounter Martians without a Martian to say you know, these guys are, are on team. Oh my God. And Dimitri is still alive at this point. Thank fuck. At least I got one famous episode that I wanted. He is, he could die, but he's not dead yet. Meanwhile, on the rest of series, we've got Miller chasing down Space Tinder guy, we get a name for him, we go find out, actually, totally different guy, and he's got some sort of ID scrambler thing that just sends you on wild goose hunts. Every time you click, it'll be some other identity. Really liked going into the um, the technological adaptations that are clearly now a thing with um, people, so like the memory crit and like all of the other things. I really like that. And that's where Miller gets the memory crit, and then he finds out that with Octavia's help, they find out that this guy is a data broker. That cannot be a coincidence with what's happened at Phoebe. So now I'm wondering, did data broker man and that his group with Julie Mao, were they double crossed? I mean, did they did they participate somehow in getting that data from Phoebe to some other party? which then wiped them out, just like they wiped Phoebe out. God, the plot just thickens on this every episode. What an episode. I did not expect to be bawling like a tiny child this episode. But I did.
that's all I got for now, guys. I'm really going to enjoy rewatching this and figuring, trying to see if I can figure anything else out during the edit, in which case you're going to see little subtitles and things in the episode with, with my updated view. And obviously, if I come to something later, then I'll mention it in the intro to the next video. But that was really fucking amazing television. Obviously, my favourite episode so far. Just phenomenal absolutely gutted it was such a complete and devastating loss to see the donager and the martians who felt so solid and permanent just wiped out and really fairly easily like we lost like really badly there and by we i include everyone who's not the people attacking which is it the opa i don't know but fuck me that was brutal that was brutal and i do speak as someone with experience of war um what some of you know and some of you don't is that um i have served as a war correspondent so i have been in war not with a gun with a camera which is not fun um and I thought the way they created the tension of those moments was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, I'm blown away. That was that was fantastic. Bring on the next episode. <sighs> Until the next time. Bye-bye.